Hi everybody and welcome back to today's part 3 of Crimes and Mysteries linked to or surrounding the British royal family. And today's video is an interesting one to say the least. Over the past 50 or so years the love life and escapades of the Queen's children had kept us riveted to our seats. The beautiful but very young Diana who appeared to have been chosen by the crown prince to be his wife, after, of course, sowing his wild oats all over the world, Africa, Australia, Canada, Germany, and, of course, Britain. <laughs> Charles had so many dates and supposed girlfriends that group names were created for them, like Charlie's Angels and so forth. And, of course, there were also a couple of less flattering group names, but we won't go into that. However, although it was his uncle, Lord Mountbatten, who encouraged him to sow his wild oats as much as possible, Charles's love life was not without controversy and scandal, particularly when the married prince had to admit to an affair with Camilla Shand then Camilla Parker Bowles, his friendship with Jimmy Savile, Peter Ball and Lawrence van der Post generated a little less controversy than his brother Andrew's friendship with Epstein and Nygaard, which is still a little beyond my comprehension as to this very day. Savile is described as the United Kingdom's most prolific, most serious serial sexual predator ever. Anyway, regardless of Prince Andrew's one marriage, which ended in divorce and relatively few affairs before and after he got married, well, at least compared to his brother, and likely because he was in the Air Force and often away on missions. So, Andrew's relationship with Epstein and Nygaard raised some very, very nasty suspicions among the public. But, like last week, I am not here today to talk about Charles and Andrew and their love life and the suspicions surrounding it, or even Harry and his alleged behaviour towards ladies of the night and one-night stands, etc. No, no, no. I'm here today to tell you that even that is nothing new, and that one of their ancestors had even worse allegations lodged against him, namely that of being Jack the Ripper. Prince Albert Victor Edward was born on the 8th of January 1864, the eldest child of the Prince and Princess of Wales, later King Edward VII and Queen Alexandra. He was second in line to the throne after his father, but did not become king because he died before both his grandmother, Queen Victoria, and his father. Albert Victor was known as Eddie to his friends and family. He traveled the world as Navy cadet and later he joined the British Army. In the late 1891, he became engaged to be married to Princess Victoria Mary of Tick, but he died a few weeks later of pneumonia at Sandringham House. Mary later married his younger brother, who eventually became King George V. All sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, for most of his life, most of Eddie's life was plagued with gossip and allegations. He was accused of being lazy, ill-educated and physically feeble. But none of that cut as deep as some of the other allegations. In later books and manuscripts, there were many theories and gossip about Eddie being predominantly homosexual. Quoting from Theo Aronson's book, his judgment of Eddie being homosexual was based on Eddie's adoration of his elegant and possessive mother, his want of manliness, his shrinking from horseplay and his sweet 
gentle, quiet and charming nature, and the rumours of him being involved in the Cleveland Street scandal, which of course involved a homosexual brothel. However, if truth be told, there was no evidence that he ever went to the brothel or was indeed homosexual or bisexual. Rumours that Albert Victor may have committed or been responsible for the Jack the Ripper murders were first mentioned in publications in 1962. It was alleged in Stephen Knight's book, Jack the Ripper, The Final Solution, that Albert Victor fathered a child with a woman in the Whitechapel district of London and that either he and or several high-ranking men committed the murders in an effort to cover this up. These claims have been reported frequently but had been dismissed as, on at least one occasion, Eddie could not have been anywhere near the crime as on the 30th of September 1888 when Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes were murdered, Eddie was at Balmoral in Scotland with family and staff and visitors. Unfortunately, despite all this proof that Eddie could not have been involved with the murders, the rumours persisted, particularly because of his involvement with a former Gaiety Theatre Chorus girl, Lydia Miller. And then, as if that was not enough, there was another former chorus girl, Maud Richardson. Letters surfaced after Eddie's death, which allegedly proved that the royal family attempted to pay Maud off. It was said that these letters were forgeries. Of course, no one really knows that for a fact either. But that is not even all. In 1890, Albert Victor was attended to by a doctor, and although it was said that he suffered from a fever and gout, it appears that that was indeed not true, and that instead he suffered from an STD, gonorrhea, likely for a second time, because letters from Albert Victor to his doctor detailed that he was taking medicine for gleet, the term used for gonorrhea at the time. In the letter, he asks for some medication, as the disease had not yet gone away, or he was infected again. These days, a man by the name of Aaron Kosminski is generally believed to be Jack the Ripper, in part due to DNA analysis, which found his DNA on a shawl which allegedly belonged to the fourth Ripper victim, Catherine Eddowes. Well, that isn't really proof either, but it is basically all we have after so many years. So, to this day, there are people who, at the very least, classify Prince Albert Victor, one of the seven Jack the Ripper suspects. Interesting, don't you think? (laughs) Okay, well, I think that was a fun one, or maybe... Not such a fun one, but interesting nonetheless. So, until we meet again on this channel next week, please take good care of yourselves. Bye.